Hey guys, welcome back to the B&B Farms Maple Channel. My name is Tony, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about pond weeds. I know, I hear you, you're tired talking about pond weeds. Well, I think I need to explain something. I'm, I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, how come my weeds keep coming back after I treat them? Well, um, actually, that's because if you're treating pond weeds, or trying to actively manage for a, a pond weed problem, you're treating the symptom. The weeds are the symptom, not the problem. Uh, it's just like when we get sick, when we catch the flu or something, we can, we can go and we can get some over-the-counter medicine and we'll feel better for a while because we're treating the symptoms, but we're still sick. Weeds are the symptom. So what causes these weeds in your pond? Excessive nutrients. Um, if you've got a lot of weeds in your pond, it's because your water's fertile. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Your fish need fertile water also to, to grow and to thrive. But Mother Nature is going to use those nutrients. And if the fish aren't using them all, she's going to plant something in the water that will use up the rest of them. So yeah, you can, you can kill your pond weeds and they're probably going to come back. Now, is this a bad thing? You know, we've talked about this before. I'm supposed to tell you that weeds are beneficial to a pond, and they are. I, I don't want to pretend that they're not. They are. They serve a role in your pond. Um, in most cases, weeds are, are beneficial to your pond. They produce oxygen that your fish need, and they provide cover for smaller fish to avoid predation. But they can get out of control, as we all know. And when that happens, you have to do something. A uh, long-term fix is to remove the source of the nutrients. Well, that's easier said than done. So most of us, myself included, uh, stick with just managing the weeds instead of, you know, redigging the pond or draining the pond down and trying to, to get rid of the nutrients. It's far simpler just to treat the symptom. So I've got a new chemical, uh, not new to me, new to you. I'm gonna go over that a little bit. It's, it's of a different type than what we're used to. Um, up to this point, we have used mostly contact herbicides where you spray and you target a specific weed or a specific patch of weed. We're going to move into a systemic herbicide today. One that you add to the body of water and the plant takes this herbicide in through its vascular system and uh, it, it kills it that way. Now there's pros and cons to this. We'll touch on, on both of those here in just a minute. But uh, the main thing I wanna get across is don't freak out if your pond has weeds in it. it. It's probably always gonna have weeds in it. Just manage the weeds to where it allows you to enjoy your pond and to do what you wanna do with your pond. Now, having said that, if you walk up to me and ask me how I feel about the weeds in my ponds, I'm gonna ask you, which pond are we talking about? Aquatic plant management is dependent upon your goals for the pond. No two people have the same goal. If we're talking about the ponds we've been walking by over here, I don't worry too much about the weeds. If we're talking about the hybrid bluegill pond where we are raising our big bluegills, I despise weeds. Um, I will admit to telling you that in that particular pond, my thought on the matter is the only good pond weed is a dead pond weed. And again, that's not what I'm supposed to say. So don't take that approach with your pond. Talk to a qualified pond professional, have them devise a plan to get you where you need to be. But this is B&B Farms Maple, and we're talking about our ponds. So let's get into this. I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, pretty windy out here. I hope this comes through and you guys can hear me okay. But here's what we're talking about. It's a product called Sonar AS, and I will hold that up in the hopes that you guys can get a better look at it. I hope you can. I don't know. Maybe not. 
Now, Sonar is just the, uh, the trade name or the brand name. We're not as concerned with that as we are the active ingredient in Sonar, which is a product called Fluoridone. Now, that's a kind of a ominous sounding word. Sounds like some type of addictive narcotic you could buy on a street corner somewhere. But Fluoridone is a, it's intended for this purpose. It's intended to, to kill weeds. It works very well. And uh, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of using Fluoridone in your pond. Pro number one, because everybody likes to hear the good news first, kills almost everything. Yep, it sure does. Uh, with the exception, and this is important, of filamentous algae. Remember that green, stringy, slimy, matty, hair type algae that floats at the top of your pond? Sonar will not affect that. But pretty much everything else you're liable to encounter in a pond in, in our area here, uh, it's going to eradicate it if you get the right concentration in the water. Um, it just it just works. It just flat out works. Safe for kids, livestock, etc. Yep, it is. Uh, usually, or when you spray a pond, you'll have like a, a water restriction on its use for a few days. Uh, you know, don't let your kids swim, or don't eat the fish, or don't water your livestock, or, or something because you know you you poison that pond. That is not the case with Sonar AS. You, you treat a pond with this stuff or with Fluoridone, uh, you can let your kids swim the same day. You can eat the fish out of it. You can let your cattle drink out of it. No problem. However, do not irrigate from that pond after you treat it with this. If you're using that pond to water your lawn or water your garden, stop. You will kill your lawn. You will kill your garden because that's how this works. Uh, this is not a poison. That's why it's safe for everything else. But it works by starving the plant to death. It, it inhibits the plant's ability to, to use chlorophyll. And the plant will starve to death. And that doesn't matter if that plant is a, uh, uh, a pond weed in your pond or a tomato plant in your garden. If the water that you're using is treated with this, it's going to die. So do not irrigate once you put this in the pond it's very effective we've had great luck with it i don't think we've ever had a an instance where fluoridone uh, did not come through for us it, it has worked every year and in fact in a lot of applications we get two years coverage out of it uh, we'll put it in in the summertime and maybe next year we still don't have a weed issue so that's pretty awesome it doesn't take much no it doesn't this is an eight ounce bottle and this bottle is enough to treat our entire hybrid bluegill pond, which is almost uh, half of a surface acre. So that's pretty cool. No oxygen crash. Uh, no, nope, you're not going to have that. We've, we've talked before about how when you spray a poison on your weeds or when you target your weeds, you don't want to do the entire pond at one time. Uh, if you do, all those weeds will die at the same time, usually rapidly. And those weeds, as... as detrimental as they sometimes are are oxygen producing factories uh, during the daylight during the photo period they produce oxygen and disperse it into your water and when it gets dark they take oxygen up well if you kill all those weeds at the same time and and they begin to decompose you have just shut off the oxygen factory and not only that but, but as they decompose the process of decomposition requires oxygen so not only are they not producing oxygen anymore, but they're taking oxygen out as they, as they decompose. That's why you see uh, instances of, of fish kills, fish coming to the surface after you've sprayed for pond weeds. It's because there's a low dissolved oxygen content in the water and the fish are suffocating. But with this, because it's not a poison and because it starves the plant to death, um, there's no worries about that. Now, what about the cons? Okay. Con number one, it kills almost everything. Yeah, that was a pro just a minute ago. But what if you've got some uh, ornamental plants in your pond? You've got some water lilies that you like to look at or, or even a stand of cattails that you're managing uh, with another herbicide, not letting it get out of control, but you want those in there as cover for some smaller fish. It doesn't matter. Uh, once this goes into the pond, everything in there that utilizes nutrients in, 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 that, in that manner, with the exception of, again, the algae, probably gonna die so yeah it's non-selective it, there's no spraying here and letting that live over there when you put this in it's one and done takes up to six weeks to work 
Yeah, it does. Because it's starving the plant to death, the results are not immediate. You have to maintain a specific level in parts per billion in your water for several weeks for this to work. Usually around 45 parts per billion is what they say the minimum up to 90 parts per billion. Uh, and that's tough to do because every time it rains, well, you've diluted the water in your pond and the parts per billion drops accordingly. Or if you have a pond that has a, a free-flowing stream into it, always has water coming in and water being discharged out, it's going to be tough to maintain that, the required level of this in your water for it to do its job. So be aware of that. Doesn't kill FA. We've talked about that. No, it doesn't. And not only that, but once this kills all the other plants in your pond, anything that it doesn't kill in your pond now has a, a complete smorgasbord of the nutrients that were previously tied up feeding those other plants. So what I'm trying to say is whatever plant is left in the pond may explode in growth. Uh, your water may turn green from a, a planktonic algae bloom. Uh, because something is going to utilize those nutrients. Mother Nature won't let those nutrients stay idle. She's going to put something in there that, that's going to use them. So be ready for that. There are options to, to treat that, but just be ready for it. Uh, that brings us to the, the one everybody wants to know. What's this stuff cost, Tony? Uh, you've, you've told us how great it is and what it will do and what it won't do, but what does it cost? Well... I'll be right back with that. Stick around. And we're back talking about Sonar AS and what it costs. Is it expensive? Yeah, it is. But I guess that really depends on your perspective. And, and to help illustrate that, we've gathered up some, some common materials, some pond related, some not. And uh, we'll go over what they cost. On my right here, just bought this this morning. Some gasoline I bought for the lawnmower. Um, today's price, currently, uh, this stuff works out to 2.8 cents an ounce for regular 89 octane gasoline. Right here is our Qtrim Plus. You know, that's what we treat our algae with, right? That green, stringy, nasty, slimy algae copper-based algicide. It runs 32 cents an ounce. This is our weed treen. We used it to treat uh, curly leaf pond weed. And what else? Oh, we sprayed the cattails with it. Uh, it does a real good job on those. It runs 55 cents an ounce. Right here is a bottle of B&B Farms maple syrup. Let's get a close up on that because yeah, you know, a little shameless self-promotion never hurt anybody. This is our Legacy Maple Syrup. That's a 12 ounce bottle. It runs $1 per ounce. Here is our Flumagard. We use that on the uh, water shield as well as the curly leaf pond weed. It runs $2.73 an ounce. That brings us to the Sonar. This is an eight ounce bottle. Sonar runs $33.63 an ounce. It doesn't include shipping. So, yeah, it's expensive. But again, it depends on your perspective and what you're using it for. Uh, to treat an entire pond like we're getting ready to do with this, we think it's worth it. Uh, for the coverage we get and the kill we get, yeah, it's worth it for us. But that's a decision that, you know, everyone has to make for themselves. I'm not going to go into how we apply that sonar. It's real simple. You just dissolve it in some water. It's a liquid. Shake it up. Get all the goodness out of the bottle. Pour it in a five-gallon bucket of water. Pour that around the pond in several different locations. You're done. That's all there is to it. So I guess that wraps it up. Uh, I think this is the end of our, our pond weed videos. I know you're all probably glad, glad to hear that. Next video, we should be back at the sawmill. We're going to be back uh, cutting some siding for some projects we got going on. So something a little different. Sawmill videos seem to be really popular. So we'll be back doing that and running the tractor and doing a little more aggressive stuff. So that's going to wind it up. Um, please subscribe. Share us with your friends. Hit that like button. Tell folks about us. 
It really does help. And we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.